In this lecture, we're going to continue discussing moving objects or objects in motion. So let's recall what the first law of motion tells us. According to our first law of motion, any object that is stationary or any object undergoing uniform velocity will remain in its current state of motion unless a net force acts on that object. Now according to our second law of motion, if a net force does in fact act on our object, our object will accelerate. It will change its velocity. So let's examine the following situation. Suppose we have a moving object. Our object is a spherical object with some uniform density mass and our object is moving downward at some velocity given by this vector with an arrow on top. Now, what happens if I apply a net force at a 90 degree angle to the motion of my object? So, this net force applied this way is perpendicular at a 90 degree angle with my velocity vector. So, if my velocity vector is pointing straight downward, my force, my net force is acting on the object at a 90 degree angle. What will happen to the velocity of my object? Note, according to the second law of motion, which we just mentioned, if a net force acts on my object, that net force will create an acceleration. So our object will begin to accelerate. But what actually happens to our velocity vector is the magnitude of our velocity. The speed does not change. The speed of this object remains the same. So whenever I have a net force that acts at a 90 degree angle to my velocity, the magnitude of velocity will not change. But according to the second law of motion, our object must accelerate. And since acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, something must happen to our velocity vector. What actually happens is the direction of our velocity changes. And that in turn changes my acceleration or actually creates my acceleration. So, I see that whenever I add a net force at a 90 degree angle to my velocity vector, my direction of velocity will change. And suppose I continue adding this or applying this force at a 90 degree angle to my acceleration. So I continue applying it. And what will happen is my object will change direction. It will change its path. But the velocity, the magnitude of velocity, the speed of my object will remain the same. So if I continue adding this force at a 90 degree angle, what will happen is my object will move along a circular pathway with uniform velocity. In other words, our magnitude of velocity will stay the same, but our direction of velocity will change. So. Let's see in which direction does our acceleration vector point. Well, the acceleration vector must point in the same direction as our net force. And in this case, our net force is pointing in, or our, yeah, our net force is pointing in this direction, and that means our acceleration vector must point in the same direction. So now I suppose I move my object to this position. What happens to my acceleration vector. Where does it point now? Well now, since my net force is still acting at a 90 degree angle to my velocity, which by the way is now pointing this way, versus here it was pointing downward, my net force will be pointing upward. And now suppose I move my <coughs> object once again to this point. Well at this point, my velocity vector will point straight upward and my force will point at a 90 degree angle inward. So we see that at any given point on our circular path, on our circle, our force will point inward into the center of our circle. And likewise, our acceleration will point this way. And this acceleration is known as centripetal acceleration. So once again, let's review the points. If you apply a net force, at a 90 degree angle to the motion of a moving object that's undergoing constant motion, constant uh, velocity, the magnitude of the velocity will remain the same, but our direction will change. So as we see our direction of that vector changes, 
at this point is pointing uh, downward, at this point our object is moving this way, at this point our object is moving this way, and at this point our object will be moving this way. Now, from the second law of motion, a net force on an object will create an acceleration. And that's exactly right. Even though our velocity of the object, the magnitude, does not change, the direction does in fact change. And because acceleration is defined as change in velocity over change in time, a change in direction of velocity changes our acceleration or creates our acceleration. So our object is in fact accelerating and it's accelerating inward and that acceleration that's pointing inward causes our object to move in a circular pathway. Now finally, any object moving with a constant magnitude of velocity in a circular pathway is accelerating and this acceleration is pointing inward and it's called centripetal acceleration. So, so now instead of having a pushing force acting at a 90 degree angle to our object's velocity, to its motion, let's create a pulling force that is also acting at a 90 degree angle to its velocity. So let's create the following system in which we have this lemon, our object, and we tie a string to this object. So let's look at the following system. Suppose I drop this object, and at the instant I drop my object, it will have a velocity going directly downwards. Its motion at that instant will be going downwards, and that's because gravity is pulling it directly downwards to the ground. So, as I let go and as I begin rotating, pulling on my lemon, what will happen to my object's motion. So notice that at this point the velocity is pointing downward and I'm pulling on my object at an angle of 90 degrees to its motion. So let's see what happens. Well as we can see our object is in fact rotating in a uniform circular pathway and we're making the assumption that my net force is constant. The magnitude of my net force in, is constant. So my object is rotating in a, circular, in a circular pathway and that means my net force pointing inward creates an acceleration also going inward except now my net force is not a pushing force it's a pulling force so let's examine our diagram of the lemon rotating in a circular pathway with a string attached to my lemon so here I begin rotating swinging my lemon at this point, my velocity is pointing this way. At point number two, my velocity is pointing this way. At point number three, my velocity is pointing this way. And at position number four, my velocity is pointing this way. Now, instead of a force, a pushing force, pushing on my object, now I have a pulling force pulling on my object. This string in fact pulls on my object and it pulls downward in this case, downward in this case, downward in this case, and downward in this case. So in each, in each case the force is pulling towards the center of my circle. And that means if my net force is acting towards the center of my circle, my acceleration also is acting towards the center of my circle. And that's exactly why my object is following a circular path in which its velocity, its magnitude of velocity is constant, but direction is continuously changing. Just like my acceleration, the magnitude of it is constant, but its direction is constantly changing. So once again, let's review what we just said. The string will exert a force, a pulling force, on the ball inward called the centripetal force. Now this force will create a centripetal acceleration which will move our object along a circular pathway. Now the formula for centripetal ac uh, acceleration is the following. Our centripetal acceleration is equal to velocity of the object squared divided by our distance r. So this will give us our magnitude of our acceleration, but in order to find the direction, we simply know that it's going inward into the center of our circle. And this is always true whenever we talk about uniform circular motion. Now, in order to find our centripetal force, our pulling force on this object or our pushing force on the object, we simply recall that force or net force is simply mass times acceleration. So, 
our centripetal force is simply m times our centripetal acceleration and we simply take this guy and plug it into our A and we get our centripetal force is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by distance r. This r is simply our radius of our circle, of our circular pathway. So, if we have some object that has a velocity or a magnitude of velocity of v to find our centripetal force, we simply take the mass of that object multiplied by velocity squared and divided by the distance uh, uh, or the radius of our circle. Now, this guy comes from calculus. And if you're curious about how I got this, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll show you. So now let's talk about the final important point, orbiting objects. How do objects stay in orbit when they travel around our Earth? How does the moon stay in orbit and how do satellites, artificial satellites, stay in orbit? Well, it's the same exact idea as tying a string to a lemon. Except now, there's no string, the force comes from the gravitational force. So this gravitational force, which comes from mass, pulls another object and creating orbits. And these objects orbit our Earth uh, in a circular pathway. So the moon, the reason the moon stays in orbit is because of this gravitational force. And this gravitational force creates an acceleration which points directly from the moon to the Earth. And this makes our moon orbit our Earth in a circular-like pathway. And the same thing goes for satellites. Our satellites orbit our Earth because our force, gravitational force, creates a pulling force. And it accelerates objects towards our Earth. And so our velocity stays the same, but it changes direction. Or its magnitude stays the same, but it changes direction constantly. And so it orbits our Earth in the following manner. So. If this is our Earth, and this is our, say, Moon, then it orbits our Earth in this motion. Because our Earth pulls on the object, creates an inward force, and an inward, <coughs> and an inward centripetal acceleration, which uh, causes a change in velocity, a change in direction, but the magnitude stays the same.